Welcome to the Nicholas Elevenx 12 technology. Today is a special day. I am given the possibility to review the Zotac GeForce GTX 980 Ti NVIDIA graphics card. Now you know I've already tested the 980 Ti before in my short comparison videos, but this time I can test this GPU in my own personal test system with my own benchmarking settings. Thank you so much Stefan Miller once again for lending me your expensive new graphics card and making this review possible. That's what I call trust. This is the reference design of the GTX 980 Ti. Since Stefan is planning to install an aftermarket cooler onto this GPU for better acoustics and cooling performance. Still, it currently costs around 740 US dollars, which isn't exactly an attractive price point. Also, I should let you know that Stefan included some fascinating artwork pieces out of stainless steel. I've gotten some the last times and he's sending me even more this time. I mean, look at that. Very, very talented guy. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Alright, but now let's get back to the graphics card. In the box we find the gorgeous 980 Ti itself, a dual Molex to PCIe 6 pin, as well as a dual PCIe 6 pin to 8 pin adapter. Then this HDMI to DVI adapter. In that mysterious black envelope we find the quick installation guide along with the driver CD. And that's it. Once again, this is the reference design of the NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti. Therefore, no overclocks are made here whatsoever. The GTX 980 Ti makes use of that immensely powerful GM200 GPU, is equipped with 6GB of GDDR5 video memory with a 384-bit bus width. The base clock is at 1000MHz, the boost at 1076MHz, and the memory is clocked at 1753MHz, 7012MHz effectively. The TDP is 250 50 watts, and of course the GPU is manufactured on the 28 nanometer process. DirectX 12.1, OpenGL 4.5, OpenCL 1.2, as well as Shader Model 5.0 are supported. Right off the bat I gotta tell you that this is a real mmm graphics card. It looks just that good. The fact that this is a reference card makes it even more impressive. At least that's my opinion. The shroud is out of metal, therefore the card is a bit on the heavier side and there's no real way for warm air to get out. It's a close design. The intake for fresh air is on the rear and that's what the blower style radial fan is for. The air gets pushed through the whole graphics card and leaves it through the front. This means you are not spreading heat inside your system. That might be the ideal choice when building small form factor PCs. But in most high-end PCs, that's irrelevant. The GeForce GTX logo on the side does indeed light up green, and if I recall correctly, it can be turned on and off in the GeForce Experience software that comes with the drivers. This is a PCI Express 3.0 graphics card, of course, and to power it up, a single PCIe 6 and 8-pin power connector is required. The GTX 980 Ti supports up to 4-way SLI, there are the connectors for it. As for connectivity, we get 1 DVI output, 1 HDMI and 3 DisplayPort outputs. This graphics card is 267mm long and should therefore fit into most cases these days. The NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti, or the recent reference designs by NVIDIA in general, come with that good looking industrial look and, paired with that black PCB, it makes a good and expensive impression. And expensive is the right keyword. Is it even worth it buying such an expensive piece of hardware for your PC? Let's find out. First, full HD benchmarks, then 4K.
The Zotec, or should I say Nvidia GTX 980 Ti, truly is a beast as it slashes every other graphics card in my charts. Well, there aren't that many, but you get my point. I don't think I need to tell you you're able to play games at maxed out settings with that card. Most of the time we clearly see 1080p isn't even the ideal screen resolution to test these GPUs with, but I like having close to or over 100 FPS in games. It feels great. Then once I increase the resolution to 2160p, even this beast of GTX 980 Ti struggled in certain situations. I mean, the games are still somewhat playable at that resolution, but I had to disable anti-aliasing to make the games run smoother. To be honest, AA isn't even needed anymore at such high resolutions. And besides, you actually can play at 4K with high frame rates too, by just lowering the graphic settings a little. There's no need to always play at ultra or very high settings. Since this is a reference card, the temperatures are a bit on the higher side of course, but nothing you'd have to worry about. As for acoustics, this GPU is definitely hearable in my system over my case fans, but I wouldn't call it annoying at all. Far from a vacuum cleaner, if we compare it like that. The power consumption is very, very impressive. These new NVIDIA GPUs are extremely efficient. While the GTX 980 Ti technically is one hell of a graphics card, the price point is harsh. Compared to the one of the GTX 980, it's okay actually, but to be honest, one of the better GPUs for the price would be the GTX 970. Yeah, yeah, no 4 gigabytes, just 3.5, I know, but 3.5 gigabytes are not bad either. Therefore, I wouldn't call the GTX 980 or 980 Ti cards with a good price performance ratio, not at all. But if you have enough money to spend so much on a graphics card, sure, go ahead, this is a very good choice. Although I would, if not planning to go for a special aftermarket cooler, like in Stefan's case here, spend a bit more and get myself one by the popular board partners with better coolers. Performance wise, I can without any doubt out, recommend the Zotac GeForce GTX 980 Ti graphics card. But since the price is a bit steep on this one, I can only give it my bronze award. Still not bad. Once again, a big thank you to Stefan Miller for lending me his card and making this review possible. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.